Now it's time to explore the new earth. These are stories to motivate and inspire us as we move forward with the restoration plan. We already know that the way we communicate with each other is changing, but what about communication with other organic beings, such as plants and animals? Kara Daniels connects with the consciousness of earth to not only speak with plants and animals, but to help heal them as well. And today she's gonna to show us how to get started with this type of communication, even if you've never done it before. So the idea of connecting with plants and animals might seem a bit unusual to some people that are watching this, but it's very possible. And Kara is joining us now to talk about how we can get started with all this. Kara, what do you think? Oh, it's something that I'm so passionate about talking literally to plants and animals and receiving yeah. information from them. It's just the coolest and it's, it's so important. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we, like, is there a first step or what do you recommend for people, especially that might be watching this now and are just like, how, where do you, what, <laughs> how do you even start with this? What's your recommendation? Yeah. Well, I, I would just like to say that absolutely every single human alive right now has the capability of communicating with plants and animals and receiving information back. The biggest thing that I would recommend anybody try to do is to just, it might seem counterintuitive, but to just get to know yourself first, get comfortable being within your own body and feeling the sensations of your physical, because when you understand what your body is telling you, when information is coming from an external source, it's a lot easier to identify. And so I would say the first few tips is to get comfortable with your body, clear some space in your mind. That is also a big one because we're always so busy. We're in our minds all the time and there's just like there's no space for information to come through. So if we can learn to create space within our mind, that will enable uh, messages to kind of come in a little bit easier. And then really knowing the basics of how information comes in is definitely kind of the third piece to that, which would you like me to go over those really fast? Yeah. Tell us what that's like. Yeah. Yeah. So in my world there, or our psychic senses, our intuitive senses are called the clairs. And some of the more common ones are claircognizance, which means clear knowing, Claire audience, which is clear hearing, Claire sentience, and Claire empathy, which I kind of smushed together because it's the feeling of emotions and physical sensations. And so that's why it kind of goes back to knowing what's going on with your own physical body. Because when we're communicating with plants or our animals, for example, and they're trying to communicate with us, like, oh, I have a tummy ache. Well, if you're asking them how they're feeling, and you don't recognize that you don't have a stomach ache and they're trying to tell you that they do and all of a sudden you have a stomach ache it's like oh my gosh right so you have yeah. to know what's going on and then how the information is coming in so it's also kind of known as telepathy um just messages come in within our body within our mind and yeah just learning to recognize kind of the difference of what is yours and what is not do you recommend starting with plants or animals first? Does it really matter? That's such a good question. I think, yes, it does matter. And no, it doesn't. Because <laughs> the reason I say this is with my students, I find that a lot of people are really drawn to connecting in with their domestic animals, in which case I would say that's where they should start. But a lot of people I meet are just really nature people and they would much rather talk to trees or plants. And so that's where I would recommend they start. Part of it is our own frequency and our own natural curiosities are going to kind of lead us in which direction that is going to be most prominent for us for communication. And so it depends on what your interests are. That being said, there's kind of a catch here. I think if you're somebody like me who really doubts the information or used to doubt the information that came in, talking with domestic animals is really important in building confidence because you can talk to an animal you've never met before, get feedback from their, um, their owner, and you can kind of build your confidence in that capacity by getting confirmation of the information coming in. So that's the only thing I would say is working with animals can help you build your confidence. Oh, yeah. 
So when you are communicating with an animal, let's say, or I mean, I guess it could be plants as well, but what does that communication look like? Are you getting images? Are you getting words? Or does it just depend? It's a full body experience. (laughs) It's, um, I get words and sentences and phrases. So that's your clear audience. And then I see like your clairvoyance, that inner inner sight, um, images, flashes. Sometimes it'll almost be a whole movie playing out. Otherwise, a lot of it is like a lot of people are just naturally empathic. And so they're feeling the emotions and physical sensations of other people or beings. And so a lot of times it's a combination of all of these different components. And in order to kind of understand the information coming through, it's like you kind of have to dissect what's actually coming in and piece it all together because it's usually more than one version or message coming in at the same time. 